Hey there guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now, the footage here did not really work very well, and again, we lost some stuff, so I'm just going to narrate over the top of this. This is post-commentary, and basically, we ran a really good race. Now, practice wasn't the best, which is unusual, because normally we're quite good at the practice. Not sort of finishing high up the order, but me understanding what the cars need and at this stage two laps to go i decided not to pit with cruise even though there's an issue because there's only one lap and you can see second place not too far behind 19th and 20th in the way and uh, Jar was going really hard at that point but you see there he gets overtaken by gerard and then valdez i wanted to try and hold up these cars a little bit but then thought better of it and just still crowd out on the turn allowing Cruz to go through anyway so Valdez at this point his tires are wearing thin he's got absolutely no fuel so we had to go right down low on him Cruz about to finish this race I decided you know we're just gonna set him up okay and that's a race win Yes, I am a driving genius, says Cruz, and it's hard to disagree considering we gave him the worst car than Valdez once more. You know, we give him the worst car, we give Valdez the best car, and on corners, Cruz really didn't do what he should have done. Um, you know, his cornering and braking stats are poor, and ended up with us being a little bit sort of outmaneuvered on those corners, and cars just flew past him now Valdez was unlucky because I had to come in early on the race with Valdez to fix uh, a rear wing or a front wing I think it was the rear wing um, because someone went into the back of him I believe if it was the front wing then it would have been on the yeah someone would have turned into him I think it was the rear wing so you can see just two laps in we had to pit with Valdez and then go eight and eight whereas it was I believe a bit better 6-6 six, six, no 7-6-6 six, six with Cruz um, soft tyres all the way other people actually stopped more than us like Girard in second otherwise we wouldn't have won but I'm really happy with the race win we need the money uh, the part designing this early in the season was probably a little bit of a mistake but uh, you see Girard there two points for the fastest lap puts him a point ahead of Cruz and overall not the best weekend for us because yes we get 20 points for Cruz we got one point for Valdez and that means Gerard has earned as many points as our entire team this weekend so not huge changes there you can see Cruz and Valdez are side by side we're down into eighth at this point we're just below where we are expected to finish this is quite a hard race um, oh, sorry, not hard race. This is kind of a hard team to work with because your only asset is Valdez and he is not really um, the easiest to work with. So there is a downside to your key piece. And everything around it is so bad that really you need to work extra hard. Now, I wish I'd have gone for Predator, the absolute worst team, because... At least then I would have been able to hire Cruz and a good second driver or a decent second driver and be in the same position but without the downside of having Valdez there. Now I can't terminate Valdez's contract, that's way too long and way too expensive. If Cruz was number one and I'd kept them barely as number two, I'd be happy at this point with the team. But you can see they're barely back above zero and we've been flirting with that sort of... Uh, that negative finance for a little bit too long for my liking so second in staff second in sponsors number one in driver however the car and the headquarters and the headquarters is like season two season three the car itself that's not great you can see there though Valdez is really not what we are uh, what we are hoping for so many negatives but we got a couple of good mechanics and you know a good lead designer so I'm hoping that we actually manage to sort of get past it and 
When Valdez is contracts up, I hope that we're able to replace him with a good driver. So I decided a little bit later on in this video, I believe, to go scout out some drivers. Not youngsters, but decent drivers. Now Valdez, you you, you could see that, um, you know, he's really fluctuating between good and bad finishes. Very inconsistent. Sometimes it's the car's fault, sometimes it's his fault. So, I'm not really sure what we want to want to be doing with him, but I'm thinking about replacing him. So, have your say on that. I'd like to hear what you think about Valdez and his new neck brace. Should we uh, keep him, or should we get rid if we have the money? Or should we just let his contract run out? I believe that's 30 months away, though, so that's the best part of three years. So the end of this season and the next two seasons, Valdez, no, 19 months. No, that's Cruz. Yeah, that's Cruz. I think that uh, 31 months is Valdez some reason. So I'm happy keeping young, filming that documentary as I look there. Very, very nice for the marketability and that helps out the team. But there we go, 31 months and 2.1 million to actually, um, you know, to break that contract, which I'm not really happy doing so i'm just going to keep working on a couple of performance upgrades for the car but mainly reliability now i think that's going to be the key point so if we can get the reliability up i'm going to be happy there you can see nothing too bad cruiser's engine did go into the red zone but that was about it I know I'm just going to pull apart the cars, and I've had enough with Valdez. The best parts are going to Cruz. He might be listed as a number two, but he's, he's not performing as a number two. So, I'm happy to give Cruz the best car at this point. Again, weigh in in the comments. I know our number one driver is unhappy. But, like, Cruz is performing. And Valdez isn't going to be happy no matter what. So, is this the right move? Is this not the right move? few questions for you to weigh in on, guys. I'd like to hear your feedback. I've had some good feedback about not pushing the car too much and couple of you, one on Twitter and one on on here, I believe, said that is a very good hire to pick up one of our mechanics, which I like our mechanics a lot. I do like the mechanics. I think that's a, an excellent pickup for us. And like I say, now we've got the, the chief designer. That is going to be good. So I think Goslin was the one they were happy with, uh, probably because of that five-star potential. If we can lock him down, then that would be a very, very good thing for us. So I'm just switching between them here to make sure that the things I want done before the next race are done. Now I know that Goslin is better at reliability, McAndrew's a little bit better at performance than she is reliability, so, you know, that's where I'd want to keep them normally, but by switching back and forth, when things aren't going to be done performance-wise before a race, I can put Kai on them, and he gets them done before the race, and then the reliability just isn't done as quickly. But that's okay. That is okay. So, at the moment, we've got it set up to where our suspension and engine will be fully reliable. But I really want to get a few more things done. So, suspension, not really an issue. Not worried about that. That gearbox needs to be up in performance as well. So we're going to try and make a little bit of a move here, you see. Four hours after race, not going to cut it. When I switch, Kai Gosling gets one day before the race. So that's why I switch. So that gearbox can go up by 40 points. It can double its performance. So anything with acceleration is going to be good there. The reliability of an engine is a must as well, and that's a big upgrade in engine. Again, almost double. So that's why I switch those guys around there. And it's an interesting little mechanic with the mechanics, no pun intended, to try and figure out what you can get done in the least time. So, 
we have a look at Dembele and that's what we had and I think I'm still right to get rid of her um, she was running quite well she's a decent driver but I want drivers that can actually win this and make me competitive in GP2 and I'm not sure I'm not sure she would have done that so I'm going to look at the un, uh, unemployed drivers here I'm looking for a young person with decent stats and I can't really find too many you can see there Lorenzo Mori some great little stats potentially no not great on braking could have below average on a couple of things but you know Gato 34 I skip over that one not really interested and then Rafael Rodriguez comes up age 27 not great adaptability or fitness and could have below average on braking but overall, that could be that could be a very, very nice number two driver behind um, behind Cruz, or equal driver with Cruz. So down to the bottom of the list, didn't really find anybody else I kind of liked. So gonna have a look through some of these drivers and see if anyone's there. Claudia Dreyfus, no she could be good but then i skip one and go down here low feedback low focus maybe low braking and fitness minimums though are quite high you can see 12 11 12 for overtaking consistency and adaptability 15 for cornering 17 for smoothness she will not wear out the towers uh, the tires she could be really good if she hits the highs on finishing and braking then you know e tyler is going to be a phenomenal driver so out we go to scout them and that could be our long term play Cruz and Tyler I like that a lot meantime I don't know if she's going to be able to join us or not so a lot of question marks a lot of question marks but if we're keeping Valdez for two years maybe Taylor comes up then so we saved our points in the last uh, in the last force. So here we go, ten points for the race winner. And I've got two votes. It'll benefit us, it says. And I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure if it will or if it won't. But I really considered abstaining once more just to get that third vote because I didn't really care too much which way this went. But when I was thinking about it, if Cruz is winning races, that gives him a bigger chance. And again, I almost went down to one vote just to keep one over. Almost abstained there, as you can see. Then I decided, let's go for it then. Let's, let, let's vote. Because if Cruz is winning then that would give us four points over second place. Even with a boost for the fastest lap, we'd still get more points than second place. And as it comes up here, you can see five, two, five, three, five, four, and it's done. Six to five, rejected. Not what we wanted, but I'm more upset over losing the two points than anything else. And now we get a problem with the ECU. Electronics messing up on the car. Fuel efficiency would go down. Cannot afford to do that. So, once again, we go back into the red. And that is not what we wanted to do. But these little dilemmas crop up and we had to deal with that. I felt that... Going backwards on fuel efficiency would be a poor thing for this car right now. And uh, it would really hurt us and hurt Cruz in trying to win these races. Because I do feel that with a better car, Cruz can actually get stuff done and maybe win a few more races. And that could take us higher up the, the order, especially if Valdez isn't running very well. So we're slightly below target. We are very secure because we're winning races. And that is sort of bringing the chairman on side. You can see Maury and Rodriguez almost fully scouted. And we've got 24 days before Tyler is there. So 
Those are my stats. A little low on loyalty. Decent on the other two. Not too much change. There are other jobs out there. But I'm not interested right now in those jobs. So the car's looking decent. We're going to look at if there's anything else I want to do. We've got three days before we head to our den. And all I think of doing here is moving it up to an hour before the race rather than anything else. Because that means we'll get a little bit extra reliability on that engine. With three days to go, it's already on 72%. So it's already our most reliable engine and our best performing engine. So I'm really hoping that works out for us. You can see the performance work then is done. So 12 days after the race, the engine will be fully reliable. So we're going to put in the engine there. And you can see 18 days, 18 days. What happens if I switch? 1320. So we go from 1818 to 1415. And that's why you need to be moving your mechanics over just to make sure that you're getting the best setup for you. So on that, we'll have our engine Basically, for the next race, if we just went with the engine, fully upgraded, and that would give us a real big boost. So, um, I'm sorry about the lack of extra race footage. There was a problem. I say the audio is completely corrupted. That's where we're going to end the episode. I hope you have enjoyed. I'll see you next time.